Now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus, also being baptized and praying. I use this particular scripture out of the book of Luke because it was one of the ones that said praying. It, the other ones in Matthew Mark doesn't say he was praying. This is the one that says he was praying. Amen. So when he came up, he came up and straightway out of the water and he was praying. One of his hands were lifted up by every his hands were. The Bible says he was what? Praying. Amen. He was praying. And the heaven was open. Now here's another part to the scripture that I noticed. That the Bible doesn't tell me that everybody saw the heavens open up. But the one that was baptized saw the heaven open up. My brothers and sisters, what God is saying to you today, as a baptized believer, nobody's going to know like you know what the Lord has oh, done for you. Amen. 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 Nobody will know like you know what you, how you seek God. Amen. Or how God has presented himself to you. Mm -hmm. Amen. So this is what the, the Lord is telling us today. To everybody that is baptized, when you become baptized, this is where your relationship to God becomes personal. Mm -hmm. This is when your relationship to God becomes personal. Now, <coughs> I need you to understand. It's personal. I need two people. Can I get two people? Any two people? Got one? I got two. Oh, you got one? I get another. I need two. Hey, right here, please. Now watch this. These two people are in a relationship. CPS later. <laughs> <laughs> you may be too old for her. <laughs> now they're in a relationship. In this relationship, you can either see them like this. When you see them like this in a relationship, your mind's eye says that they are in a close relationship. Or they could be in a relationship. Like this, and you never see them together. Most of the folks that I know, that's the way I see them in their relationship. Hello? Amen. And we call it a relationship. Hmm? Now, I really want to ask you a separate question Is this the relationship you think God has desired? No. Or you think God has designed the relationship to where you become? What? So uh, in the world we live in in 2013, we have accepted this as a relationship. Because that's what everybody's doing. Isn't that right? But this is not a relationship because as long as they keep this distance, they, will, they won't know much about each other except for the little time. That they're together. Amen. And if there's anything like the baptized believers of 2013, they're like this Monday through Saturday. And then they got two hours together on Sunday. And then sometimes on Sunday, something puts a wedge in them. And they like that. Because they got to go home together. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Amen. But the Lord is trying to get you to understand is that you have to have a personal relationship with God. And the only relationship He will accept is the one where y'all become. He will not accept the relationship where you are always a part. Because if you get so far apart, that will be a time that you can sit there and claim this as your uh, significant other. You can claim God as your God. But and there will be a time that he will say these words to you. 
Depart from me, for I know ye not, you workers of iniquity. Some of us would love to get rid of our husbands and wives. Don't testify right now. Keep that. And there are times that we wish we could get rid of it. There's times Sister Walker wish she could get rid of me. There are times she wish she could get rid of me because we're not always like. There are times we sit there and say, well, I, I, I don't want to be around anymore. Right now, I don't want to be. And I've been saying, I don't want to be together with Sister Walker right there. So we're not always like that. But if I treat God that way, all right, all right. If I treat God that way, and I act like that I don't need him at certain times, and at certain times I want him, he'll be worse than this fuck. Yeah, you ought to want me at night time. You don't want me with me in bed. Now y'all get shot. You don't want me for sex. You don't want me with me to go to the grocery store. You don't want me seeing with me here. You don't want me seeing with me there. But you don't, you don't mind just seeing me when it's something for you. Now, when you got something going on, you want me to come over there. But when I got something going on, you always got something that's going on. Just down and turn this. What did God say if I treated him like that? Uh, it's not so squeaky or anything. Because he will say, depart from me, for I know you not. For you are a worker of iniquity, of selfishness, self-righteousness. You don't do things to please me. You do things to please you. But a baptized believer needs to have the right attitude. Isn't that right? So watch what it says here. When the heavens opened up and the Holy Ghost, the what? Oh, no. The Holy Ghost descended. The Holy Ghost. See, you can't say that he had that the he had divine intervention, uh, that spirit of God, because the Bible says the Holy Ghost descended upon him when he came up out of the water. And it descended <laughs> in the bodily shape like a dove of on him. In the bodily shape of a dove. My brother and sister, if you don't understand this little uh, analogy of the dove, it simply means that baptized believers, if you have the right attitude when you're baptized, you come up feeling as though you have peace in your life. Amen. That's what the dove represents, is that you have peace in your life. Uh, that peace will come in your life, because I assure you, as long as you have the Lord on your side, he will calm the rage of sea of whatever menagerie or monopoly that's going on in your life, he will be the one that will show you how to say, peace be still. He will be the one to give you the encouragement to be able to know that even though you see everything around you swirling and turning and turning and tossing, that in the midst of a storm, God can still but you have to have the right attitude. See, the baptized believer has a responsibility. He's been given the opportunity. Amen. He's been given the opportunity to be able to serve a true and living God. God. And if you've been given that opportunity, then there's something required of okay. uh, we don't like the required part, do we? Yeah. We love the given part. All right, all right. But we need to understand something's going to be required here. So, it says, and the voice came from heaven and said, thou art my beloved the love. Let's see here. John 3 16. The, the scripture says, God so loved the world that he gave us all that he got. Now that he has been baptized and he has lived a life that's acceptable to God, he has said, He is my beloved son. You know how you want to just tell your children you want to separate sometimes? You are like and you are no. <laughs> You want to tell them, I love all of y'all, but I really 
nearly love this one. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one that's nearly my heart. This is the one. Yeah, parents not gonna tell the children that, but all of us that are parents inside we know. Yeah, because I know who I'm gonna tell that to. <laughs> so watch this. This is what he said. This is my beloved son. And then he says those marvelous words, in whom I am well pleased. Because Jesus had to show himself worthy of fulfilling the purpose of God. Amen. All things work together for the good of those who love God and call according to God's purpose. Jesus had to fulfill God's purpose, so he had to show himself worthy. He had to live a life acceptable of being able to fulfill God's will. My brothers and sisters, if you are a baptized believer and you say you're going to follow the life of Jesus Christ, you need to start living a life that